All right, so we're recording this now, so we'll give you this sent out here, and we're beginning the meditation portion. It'll be a quick few minutes just to get settled in. So closing your eyes. If you're sitting or standing, kind of rooting into either your feet or your sit bones. And then starting to breathe into the heart. And as you do that, starting to let the day fade away, really creating this environment for yourself in this moment of the webinar. As you begin to breathe into the heart, just letting yourself sink a little deeper, letting outside noise fade away. And then taking a moment to set an intention something that you want to get out of this or something maybe even bigger for the day. It's always good to kind of claim what you want. And then feeling that as if you have gotten it. It's like you want it to just state in the body. It's like you allow yourself to get bigger inside out. Seeing if there's any areas in the body that feel a little wobbly and solidifying it with this intent. And seeing if there's anything in your body alignment that can straighten as well with this intent that fills the cells and bones. And from here, let's take three deep breaths from the heart. And then one deep breath from the depths of your belly. All right, and then slowly opening the eyes to come out of the meditation. Coming back, great. Thank All you. right. Thank you, that was great. I actually feel more settled now. Yeah. <sighs> So hello, if you've just joined, this is the Take a Leap and your Take a Career Leap webinar with Bryce Kennedy and Amina Itzisalmi. Um, if you want to say hi in the chat box and tell us where you're located, whether you're in the UK or the US or somewhere else, please do. And otherwise, we'll get started. So we'll give us a little bit of background about us and our journey. Um, we'll share a few um, uh, insights and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So I thought I'd start with who Bryce is for me. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always easier to introduce other people. Oh, I think. That's good. So Bryce Kennedy is a lawyer by background. He's many more things, but he started his career as a solicitor. Um, you might have to remind me which firm you were with. And he is now a soul brother on this journey for me because he went through the same process of letting go of a highly structured and predictable career 
to following his um, intuition and inspiration to become uh, someone who can really help others settle into themselves and find out what their uh, purpose or path is and be with them al uh, along the journey and with the ups and downs. And one thing I really find amazing about Rice is his ability to be with um, uh, difficult moments, difficult experiences. Uh, he's someone I can turn to, I know I can turn to, and I don't have to pretend to be anything than what I am or that I'm feeling anything than what I'm feeling. And that is hugely valuable when you're trying to do uh, your own thing and follow your own path. So thank you, Bryce, for being who you are. Thanks. I don't know if you want to add anything that I've missed, the, the external no, details. No, that is better than I could have ever <laughs> Um yeah, and then Amina. First, I got I, just a quick background of how I even met Amina. I was in the bathroom. Let's just start right there. Let's just get it all out. I was in the bathroom at uh, Boston Consulting Group where I do uh, mindfulness consulting. And this guy approaches me while, while I'm wrapping up, washing my hands. And he goes, are you, he, he keeps looking. We keep making eye contact in the bathroom, which, you know, I mean, look at me. I kid out. And uh, he, he goes, are you British? <laughs> I was like, that's the most random question. Are you British? And so when he asked me that, uh, I was like, no, I just started laughing. And we, we hit it off immediately. And he introduced, and, and basically, we ended up having brunch together, became kind of amazing friends. Fast forward, he's like, you got to meet someone. You got to meet Amina. I was like, uh, okay. And I'm always a little weird about meeting people right off the bat, especially over Skype. It's just like, especially when I, it's like one of those things that's like, hey, how you doing? And that's kind of how we first started. We, we didn't really know where it was going. We didn't, <laughs> we just kept Skyping each other. But the cool thing was, is like the minute, and you probably get a sense of it now, the minute you meet Amina, there's this immense compassion, immense heartness. And so we just kept scheduling Skype calls without any kind of agenda, which is very rare for me because I always like to have an agenda. <laughs> and the more and more Amina and I started meeting together, the more and more I realized, A, she's disturbingly brilliant. Just, I'm going to say disturbingly. <laughs> disturbingly brilliant. Um, everything under the sun in terms of the work that you've done at the UN and just even your life in general is, it should be a book. Um, and then, but what I love too is the brilliance that you bring, especially because we've, we've kind of had like impromptu coaching sessions, but not in, not directly like that. But what, what the level of intellect that you bring with the intuition is really quite profound and amazing. And I don't think a lot of people have that. I think it's either one or the other. You have the intuition and then you're just kind of a hippie. <laughs> if there's any hippies out there um or you're intellectual and you miss the intuition and it's just either black or white and you really bring home both with an amazing ability to hold people so um oh. yeah oh great. thank you oh you never told me that before <laughs> secrets oh i feel all fuzzy now yeah. oh well on that note, positive yeah, let's, note, let's I think we can in. move into helping you guys out with any, any, um, so first we'll share, we'll share, first of all, two approaches, right? So we've both taken a career leap in the last few years, two to three, four years. And uh, we're on the other side, as it were, or on the, on another side. Um, and we're going to tell you a bit about how it started and what was running through our minds the kind of fears that came up. So yeah, and hoping that's useful. So we talked about the saturation approach versus the big leap approach. So um, Bryce, you wanna go first or? Sure. I, yeah. Yeah, so th this is just another cool thing because so when I started leaving law and I had no direction of where I wanted to go, I wanted, I started looking into acting because of, I, I always wanted, I always dreamt of sharing my emotions and, and these big things. And so I went to acting school while I was um, a lawyer. And 
the acting thing was great, but I couldn't quite unleash who I couldn't I couldn't break open the emotions, eh? Because as a lawyer, you gotta shove those down deep within you and never let them show. Um, and that led into this exploration of spirituality. I was having this headache and my teacher was like, oh, that's your third eye opening. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you've lost your mind. There's uh, absolutely not. And she's like, no, 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 no. You need to learn how to open your third eye. And I was, it just, it was insane nonsense to me. But as fate would have it, I went to this meditation and this meditation opened me up and all this other stuff. And so the reason I'm telling the story is I'm the type of guy that I've learned now, this has been a seven year journey for me, that it takes me a while. It takes me a while to like bring in different things to find where I'm going. And the saturation method that I like to call is, it basically you start somewhere where you just have an inkling of what it is that you want or you want to change and you begin there. Right? I couldn't say, oh, all of a sudden mm. I want to be a, a consultant or a coach right off the bat because mm. there's just no possible, I, I couldn't have fathomed that I would end up here. But mm. what it was, was, was this exploration of things that I've always wanted to try, always wanted to do. And so little by little, I would do that. And then it would lead into this other thing and then this other thing. And had I left immediately the way i'm i'm constructed as a human being i would have i would have just tanked and there were many times that i actually did leave i was like peace i'm out i'm out of the firm i'm going out and within two months i burned through our savings total just desperation because i didn't allow a cushion for myself to figure out what the next steps were i was putting all my eggs in one basket but i didn't even know what the basket was and that's why I think saturation or this tipping point, if you will, is a really great method. If you're the type of person who doesn't have that clear, clear idea yet. And the best way to do that, again, is just finding things that you like. And we'll go into this a little deeper after Amina shares her side. But for me, it's, it's exploring things that I like or that I'm nervous about or that kind of terrify me. Like I did stand up comedy probably six times. I would go to this basement in the East Village, uh, it was the West, West Village, and I would do this stand up. And it, it horrific. I mean, really bad stand up to the point where I'm like choking because I was so nervous. And I'll never be a stand up comedian, but the act of doing was so important that after, that after six or seven times, I knew I could do. I got over such a major fear that I could do it. And that in itself really yeah. helped that kind of tipping point. So that's quite reassuring then for people who are thinking, oh, should I, should I leave my job? Should I not leave my job? It doesn't have to be black and white. It can be a gradual process where you're working things out until your motivation builds up and the clarity is greater. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And that, that's, that's really what it was. And I mean, heck, five years from now, I think everything could change. I mean, even my business has morphed as I've grown. And before, again, for people who have very structured minds on how things should be, realize as you're stepping into these bigger parts, they, they kind of have to go. Like, so I would view these these steps as failures if I didn't know exactly what my business was. I, I didn't know exactly how I could work with people or heal people or whatever it was that I wanted to do because it wasn't codified and marketable in a way my lawyer brain wanted to be. Like, here's a nice shiny package. And it's just not the way I work. I've never worked that way. And again, the more you honor the way that you work and your life is such a beautiful kind of track record to see how you operate are you a big step like my wife she she likes big steps boom shadow the world next where i'm like <laughs> i'll have a tea a little coffee move into the next thing that's just me yeah amina yeah you're probably more of the big step type though yes i think uh yeah i, I met my uh, phd supervisor the other day or ex-phd supervisor and he asked me how this process happened and i realized that i had to just step outside of the world I was in 
So for me, I had fixed a goal when I was at university at medical school saying, right, I want to do public health stuff and work at international level. And then throughout my career, I always, um, I had an idea of how to go, but I always kind of, I did follow my intuition kind of, oh, now I'll go to, to um, South Sudan. And, oh, now I'll, yeah, I'll do a PhD. Even though it wasn't in the original plan, I was prepared to take those leaps. Uh, and then eventually I realized, I think this dream is coming to an end. Um, and I had kind of realized the dream of, oh, wow, I'm working at international level now on public health issues. And I had that experience and I felt I'd contributed something. Um, and then it felt like that, 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 that was coming to an end. When I looked for the next 20, uh, the next 20 years, uh, when I spoke to, um, say, people who were, might be role models or people who were ahead of me, 20 years ahead of me, I thought, that doesn't feel right to me. That I don't think that that's my path. And when it came to the point where I had to apply for the next job, I decided for the first time not to do that. <laughs> And um, a decision was made, but there were also factors that made it favorable. So um, I could support myself for a little while. Um, I had an idea that maybe yeah, uh, I could do consulting. And then I realized there was another thing called coaching that incorporated my passion for, passion for personal development. And I thought, okay. And then I just let myself, I, I took the leap, right? And then I just kind of let myself ride the wave to find something more concrete um, which I think was kind of the process you were describing as well that finding you have to find the thing um, without being too fixed on the on what it will look like and then slowly things started to emerge I started to work with people and um, the business started growing I started to get ideas for products started writing my newsletter um, and things sort of started to work out. So there was a big leap, but somewhere you still have to play with the, with the waves of energy and inspiration and not be too fixed, but know that something will emerge. Yeah. So that was, that was a general outline of my <laughs> transition. Yeah. Is that, uh, just just on, a, on a note too, it's like, it, it's, it, I love using kind of your life as mm -hmm. a, a litmus test of where you're going to go. I mean, because Amin and I talk about this a lot because we're, we're both people that get a little intellect, too intellectual sometimes. And we, we love, you know, exploring different methods of marketing and coaching and spirituality and all this different stuff. And I think what we've kind of come to is like, it really has to be your flavor at the end of the day, like mm. there's people who have done it so well and they know how to do it so well. And that's great for them. And it's not that you can't use those data points, but at the end of the day, to be the most successful and to be in your leap, it's got to be through, it's got to be through like how, how you are or who, who you are and kind of staying true to how you've been your entire life. Yeah. Not in terms of fears and stuff like that, but just, the modalities yeah and, and would you say because uh, for me this is part of the journey of, um, of of my own growth my own development my own maturation or what Carl Jung would call individuation that there's a time in your life where you're kind of conforming to the scripts that you've been handed down from society from family and so on and you're like doing well you might be doing really well at it I mean you might not do well at it but you might do really well at it which becomes a bit of a trap because it's not your script, but you're doing well. <laughs> and then there comes this point, uh, a lot of people I work with are in their 30s, for example, it seems to happen. Uh, I think millennials experience it sooner, I I'm not sure, but definitely there's data showing that in, in the 30s, people tend to, to ask themselves questions. Is this the right job? Is this the right relationship? Is it the right situation? Um, and it might show up as a change of career. It might show up as a change of something else. So for me, this has been definitely part of that process. And so it is really important if you're going through that process that you tune in to what's true for you um, and see how to bring that out. Of course, you have to look after your material needs, otherwise you'll panic. Um, um, but even then, that's uh, relative as well. 
Uh, and ultimately, it's about you discovering what's right for you in, in your life. Yeah. Would you agree? When you, when you take that leap, it's interesting. I've been thinking about this a lot, and I, I wanted to make sure we shared it. It's a perfect segue. But like when you take that leap, uh, there's, there's kind of sometimes a lot of hope and belief that life will be shinier and brighter <laughs> once the leap happens. And in my experience, with the experience of my clients, it is there's nothing further from the truth. It's like, <laughs> so whatever, excuse my friend, but whatever little shit storm is happening here right now, like around you, it will just be magnified when you take that leap. And in terms of, because you're, you're removing yourself a lot of times from a safety net that has always been there or a belief system that has always been there or something that you've rested on, whether it's your intelligence, whether it's a certain way of life and now you're stepping out and you're like, you're claiming, you're claiming the space. And so these little nag, these things that have kind of maybe withheld you in the, in the past, they have a tendency to be amplified, but knowing that you've taken this, this leap, this step forward, you're also, more empowered to have ammunition to work through that. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Uh, that's why it's important, right? If you're thinking of taking a leap, work on as much of the stuff that you have, uh, as much as the fears or any, if you're, if things set you off, try and understand what's going on there as much as possible before you take your leap. Um, and then if you have to take it anyway, take it. Um, but if you don't have to, maybe, maybe wait a little longer until you're clearer about what's, what sets you off, what triggers you, what makes you fearful. Um, so that that doesn't come up later after the leap. Yeah. <laughs> There's and so it, much to talk about. And no matter what, it's going to come. I mean, it's like, going to come anyway. <laughs> some form or another. I mean, I, I look at my marriage. It's such a perfect example. Like, the minute I married Bridget, my wife, we, we were this clash of titans. I mean, it was like <laughs> two, just <laughs> Godzilla and the Hulk. I'm the Hulk. Oh. And uh, just clashing. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll do another webinar on anyway, relationships. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> but the moral of the story is, is like, it just brings up so much beautiful stuff for you to work through if, if you have that chance. And so, it, and it's just like the, this leap. Yeah, you'll be faced to work through that. Yeah, it's all it's 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 a journey, definitely a journey. Um, but when it's time, it's time. It's like using the relationship analogy again. If it's time for you to move on to take the leap, um, then go for it. It is you. Yeah, it's like a relationship. When you know it's ended, it's ended, and it's time to move on. If you stay longer, you'll lose your life force. You'll lose your life energy and your vitality, and you'll start to crumple on yourself. Uh, so much to talk about here, but we don't have time to get into it in much more detail because we want to take you about, uh, tell you about some of the common thinking patterns, which ties into what we've just been talking about. The sort of things that can hold you back after the leap or during the leap. And as Bryce was um, emphasizing, they, they, there'll be clues already in your journey, in your career journey, um, up until the leap point that will tell you what will get in the way um, of moving further and might even be amplified. So a common one that I find with people uh, with, uh, in me and in uh, less so now, but it's, it, it's magnified when, you're, when you jump out, outside your comfort zone. Um, and uh, a mindset that I see my clients is imposter syndrome. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Um, um, uh, a short definition is that it's the inability to internalize your own success. Uh, in practice, it can mean things like um, perfectionism. It can tie in with fear of failure, like a ter ter terror, not fear of failure, but terror, being terrified of failing. Um, a feeling of not being enough, that you can't do it. Um, and if you're taking a leap, you're trying something new, those things are really going to stop you. Because it's one thing being in a, in a nice salary job, um, and knowing what you're doing more or less nine to five between nine and five. Um, it's one thing for the, the imposter syndrome to show up there. It's another thing when you're out there in the wild, trying to create something from scratch, that's really yours, your creation that you feel 
you're going to be judged for, you know, you can't blame your organization. It's really, it's just, it's a bit like a PhD. So imposter syndrome is going to be really um, important to deal with and to get familiar with so that when those thoughts show up, they're not going to trip you up and stop you and uh, curtail your leap and make you go back um, because you'll see it for what it is. It's just a limiting mindset. Would you agree? Right. What, what, that's, that's my, my piece. I think yeah, that's I mean, another. Pretty spot on. Mm -hmm. the, the imposter syndrome is, is very big too. I, I noticed with um, especially educated people. Um, there's something <laughs> I, like. I, because we're perfectionists. Yeah. It's almost like people are too smart for their own good. That's, that's what I always say to my consultants, clients, where I'm just like, no, you're too, it's too, you're too smart. And what happens is, especially with lawyers, since I know this, we have a tendency to rationalize everything one way or another to either not doing something or doing something, but not from a place of integrity. And so with all of that and this imposter syndrome, it's very important to kind of just you have to get clear of where this is getting, where this is coming from and what it is that's saying, because under the imposter syndrome, the perfectionism, like there's always this, well, I could take another, I, I should get a, another degree or I should study a little bit longer or <laughs> I'm not a master in this yet. And it's just not true. It, it, you, that's why the leap needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the, what you said about when the, when the imposter syndrome shows up, you'll either not do something or you'll do it for the wrong reason. Uh, in other words, out, um, without integrity. You're not doing it for the right reason. You're not doing it because this is an amazing thing to do that you're going to bring into the world. You're doing it to prove that you're not a failure or to prove that you're good enough, or to prove that you're perfect and it's going to fall flat. Or it might work for a little while and then it'll crash. And, and I see this. And it was really enlightening for me to see uh, in my clients who are, some of them, are, they're brilliant people in general. And some of them just ha objectively have really uh, achieved a, a very high status, right, by uh, conventional standards. And they still have the same thoughts as everybody else who has imposter yes. syndrome. <laughs> it's so true. I'm always amazed. I will, I will work with a partner at a firm or the consulting, they, like big, big people that, that, that do big things. And their thoughts are that the same of a 15 year old boy. Like, <laughs> and, 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 and that's the way I, I do want to say this kind of going back to what I was saying. It's important to, to catch these things now because I, I see, I work with all kinds of ages and sometimes I'll have a really young person at 20, three, no, maybe 24, that'll come into a consulting firm and they'll have all these fears, you know, imposter syndrome or blah, 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 I don't feel whatever. And then fast forward 40 years, I'm working with the older version of that person now of say a partner and it's the exact same thoughts. It's scary. It's eerie how if, if a lot of this stuff doesn't get worked through now, even if you take that leap, it will be, it's kind of like it freezes in there. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't change. It doesn't, it doesn't is, change. But and this kind of goes to the point of like, Uproot no matter, it now. Yeah, like how successful you are, whatever success means, how much money, this, that, the other thing. It's funny, those, those things will rarely get satisfied or fixed unless... Yeah. It's like yeah, it's yeah. The, the, the saying, happiness is an inside job. I'd say success is an inside job. Mm. Uh, we were going to talk about scarcity. Um, do, you want to, do you want to speak about that for a, a scarcity mindset, which can also get in the way, especially if you're working independently and you're going to start to have running, uh, just going to have to start running your own business or uh, if you're consulting, freelancing and so on and so forth. And you need to <laughs> uh, deal with the uncertainty that's coming up. Uh, when you're doing that. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but do you want to make a few comments on that, Bryce? We can sure. go into um, more depth another time. Yeah, just for scarcity, th this, was, this was where I, this was kind of one of my big, big boys. Um, <laughs> everyone has kind of their big thing. This was mine. Um, I think the, we all have it. Yeah, uh, it's funny how that worked out, right? Hmm. 
essentially, what the first thing that took me a while to recognize was I was so used to getting paid from an anonymous big brother figure. Uh, excuse my analogies, but this is just how I work. So it's like sucking from the teeth of a corporation. And, and you, just, you just know it. You're just like, you look up, you know where the milk is, and it comes and it flows down. And it doesn't need to be a corporation. It can be from a system of education or government. There might be children on this call, by the way. We didn't restrict the age. If there's children on this call, they should, <laughs> they should be ready for this stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> the proper British, the terrible. Yes, it's anyway. a, he's American. But. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to the Brits. <laughs> and I apologize to the Americans. Uh, anyway, so the thing is, once you recognize that a lot of belief systems are kind of like, I have to be paid top down that that was probably one of the biggest aha moments when I realized like if I wasn't getting paid from a big source of, of cash, like a firm or a corporation, then my mindset was this will never work. Like how am I ever going to make that amount of money by myself? And just recognizing those type of patterns was really beneficial. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is, is now is I look at it, once I cleared that away and kind of focused on how I wanted to earn, it, it changed everything. It, it, I realized I could earn more by doing what I love once I released that belief or like once I saw that belief. And that was, that was one of the biggest importance. And we, this is a whole seminar in itself, but yeah. You know, share your thoughts. Yeah. That's a big one. So if you have any issues around money, how you spend money, how you earn money, asking for money, uh, it can show up in how you treat yourself, uh, how you, um, yeah, let's just keep it to how you treat yourself. Um, then it's good to look at those before you take a career leap, especially if you're moving into working independently, because they are going to show up. And if you have issues with money, then they will get in the way. Um, so... Moving on from what might block you, what are some daily practices um, that you can use to move through the leap smoothly? smoothly? Again, emphasizing it, there's a mindset issue, there's, um, uh, there's the work you do on the inside that then helps you to move on the outside, uh, to achieve things on the outside. And that, that's really the whole point of coaching, or good coaching. Coaching isn't really about having a goal and then having a strategy for it. It's a lot of coaching is around the mindset because we live in a knowledge economy. So you can go to Google and find out pretty much anything you want. And who here hasn't been in a situation where you know what to do, but you're just not doing it. You're procrastinating, you're distracting yourself, you're finding excuses. And this can include the career leap. You might be procrastinating on your career leap that you know you need to make. Um, so this is where coaching can be really powerful. Good coaching will help you see what you really want, what's true to you, and get the uh, clarity around the, the, what's limiting you from the inside. And then there should be some, uh, there might be some accountability along the journey so that to make sure that you are staying true to your path and what you've said that you wanted to do and keeping your mind clean and tidy and focused. So Bryce, what daily practices, strategies helped you? I have a very rigorous morning routine. Um, again, this is for the type of person that I am. I like having very structured. So first thing in the morning, I wake up, drink a glass of water, replenish the body's fluids, boom. I go straight into meditation for about an hour, hour and 10 minutes. From there, I go to a cold shower um, and then some breathing exercises and possibly either a workout or more meditation and that's kind of my my the per because i'm heavily into meditation that that's that's my that works for my schedule i i can block out three hours in the morning and do that now what i notice with other people that's very important and these are some strategies that i give to a lot of clients is it's important to set the intention of the day kind of like we did with this this practice because again since we have so much data coming into our brains at all times, what happens is if we don't set that intention or we don't set that, that mindset right off the bat, we don't find, in my experience, our, our, our space. All we're doing is just ingesting. 
we're just ingesting data. So first, I would suggest set the intention right away. Two, do not look at your phone. Do not look at your phone for the first 15 to minutes to an hour. It's really important to start creating that space in the morning that is yours and solely yours. It is so, so crucial so crucial in the morning, especially when you're taking a leap, to have time where it's just you. Because if you start reading different things, it basically sinks your mindset. I noticed this one time with Instagram or Facebook, someone was saying uh, they were on it. They were all excited. And then the minute they came off of it, they were kind of dampened. They were uh, like sad. Like there was a slight air of depression from, from being on that. And what happens is it's because we just inundate our minds with facts that have no point at all. So <laughs> it, it's really important to set the intention, um, no phone. Uh, if you can do a meditation, a breathing exercise, a journaling exercise, sometimes journaling is so great, especially when you make that first transition and just pour out everything out of your mind. But if you could do that, you could do, anyone could do that in a 20 minute exercise. That, that would, that's very easy. And, uh, that's, that's what I would suggest for the for morning routine. But again, it, morning to me is the most precious time not to waste. Hmm. How about yeah. you? Yeah, and I, I'd say um, that from what I've read, most of the sort of top achievers have a very strong morning routine. Um, because if you don't set the intention for your day, then something is some, someone else's agenda or some other agenda is going to come and grab you, right? Um, so I'd agree with you. It's super important um, in the morning to have um, that routine. Uh, and I, I probably don't practice them as rigorously as you, but journaling, definitely. Uh, meditation. Uh, um, meditation is, I don't know why it's not, I don't know, law, because <laughs> it is... It is such um, a beautiful way of being able to focus, get clear on your ideas, uh, regulate emotionally. So for me, meditation was actually a really big thing. Um, coming up to the leap, coming up to the end of my final contract and moving uh, and, and further past that, but especially moving up to it because there was a lot of fear. Like, What's going to happen? What's going to happen? So the, the employee in me was like, no, 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 we have to find a job. You know, what's going to happen? And meditation was so important to be able to regulate um, that fear, be with it and soothe myself and then move, move past it into what was to become my future. So meditation, take your meditation. It is a panacea for, yeah, I, I can't sing the praises. My clients will know this. I, <laughs> at one point I was thinking of only working with people who do meditation. Otherwise, how can you understand your mind? So if you're thinking about meditation, go for it. I really, really encourage you. And Bryce is an amazing teacher. Uh, so check out, check him out, check him out, check out his website. Um, so where are we? Um, Another, I think I might show one more uh, practice to support people who, if, uh, who are going through this kind of transition, um, and that is to not do it alone. Mm. Uh, especially if you're the independent type, the rescuer type, like you're used to sorting everything out, you can fix everything, and people love you for it. You know, you get rewarded for that, great. But if you're going through this massive life change, you deserve some support. In fact, it's healthy, and it's, if you don't do it, then there's something not right. You're not meant to go out into the desert on your own and cross it without any uh, map or guidance or support or people who can provide you with food and water and so on and so forth. Even if it's just at the beginning of the journey, just to help you and give you some stuff to go further along. Um, so I uh, had my, I'd had a lot of coaching before um, uh, as I built up, which it was part of my journey of self-discovery. So you can work with a professional around your transition or, and I would say, and build um, a support team. Some people call it a career reinvention team. Some people call it a tribe, but essentially you're, tr you're, you're, you're building a network or um, a group of people that are a, a resource to you. So you can, um, uh, find a sense of belonging, of support. You have someone to turn to. 
Um, even accountability of people will say, hey, you said you were doing this thing. What, why are you sending a job application, for example? So I would say don't do it alone. Find, uh, especially if you're the independent type, use this as a learning moment to learn to ask for help and to let yourself be helped and receive that help. Amen, yeah. sister. <laughs> I'm getting really uh, deep. I, but it, it just, I'll say one note. It, it's the truth. It's, it, to think that you can do it on your own. You mean I might lie? <laughs> yeah, you're a liar. No. It's, it's the best thing in the world. I, I've gone through so many people, and some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to be bad. It doesn't mean you stop the journey. Yeah. In fact, Bryce was a gift to me in that sense. He, he's, he represents that new me who's able to um, ask for help and be in a team with uh, someone else who's on a similar journey um, and learn to support and receive support. So thank you, Bryce. Too. Right. So um, I think we're done with our little insights. We don't want to overshare and uh, overload. And we're not even sure whether this is useful. Um, if this is useful, then you can you can write in the chat box. Please do. Um, but we'd like to open it up to questions. Um, any feedback or questions, comments would be great. Um, this is the 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 uh, the time we've allocated for for that. So anybody want to have a go? It would be great to hear from you. <laughs> da, 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 da. Don't be shy. Bearing in mind, we've had some techie problems. I don't know if, you know, that might be something know, else going I don't on. Know if you guys <laughs> we hope you can hear us. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, if anyone's tech, um, typing in the thing, we can, we'll, we'll stop it. And it's, it's just a really good time to ask a question about your personal process too, like if there's just something that you want. Um, I, I do want to harp real quick on that thing that you said, just to ask for help, because a lot of people that are high achievers, intelligent, they're cynics too, including myself, highly cynical people, which is great. And use that cynicism as a way to go to work with someone that you kind of, that you judge. It's beautiful. It's, it's really, I, I went to so many people, I went to this acupuncturist when I first started and I was like, this is, this is witchcraft and, <laughs> you know, inundated with Fine. dark spirits. And he ended up becoming one of my best friends and changed my entire life. He began on the journey. So, Use the things that you judge, fear, worry about, and are excited about as momentum. I, I really love the approach of kind of going into the fear, into the judgments. It's like, who's the one person I would never want to work with? Let's, we'll say Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins, that guy's, that's who I should go work with. Just because it doesn't mean I need to get everything that I want out of it, but it's more like, it's just one more release of a judgment to see how that person does that. And there's always beautiful tips and learning in each person. Mm. And that also means don't stop though either. Don't stop until you get exactly what you want. Mm. That's nice and encouraging. That sounds very Tony Robbie, Robbins. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, we have a question. Hi, Jenny. Jenny's asking, uh, can we recommend books, videos for beginning meditators? I think that's one that you can go for, Bryce. Uh, people use Headspace. Okay, yeah. I, have a lot, I have a lot of beliefs around Ooh, meditating. Some echo. Okay. Oh, do you hear it? Is it still echoing? Echo, uh, echo. If you move back. Echo, oh. echo, 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 echo. Oh. We, our technology today is just, is it still echoing? It's, the, it's part of the journey. Uh, yeah, you're still echoing. Maybe Pavel. speak um, speak softly. Banana. Hey, Pavel. Nice to see you. Is this any better? A bit. Okay. So if there's one thing I would do is I would try to meditate in a group as a, as a starting point. Mm -hmm. 
it's really difficult to start meditating on your own. I, I tried that. I meditate with a school called clairvision.org and they're an amazing group. You can go as deep as you want and, and whatnot. But I, um, uh, anytime you get a chance to meditate with a group, there's a certain amount of cohesion and silence that lands that you won't get by yourself. Mm. Yeah. I like that. And there's, a, there's some new science, scientific findings coming out around how the heart's electromagnetic field can be felt mm. um, and things like that that are really interesting. And I mean, obviously, there's so much evidence around the benefits of meditation. Um, but what you're saying is that meditate, meditating in a group has this added benefit of getting you in the zone. Yeah, because so many people struggle on their own and then just quit. So... Yeah. So Headspace, I, I also tried Headspace at one point. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I think go to YouTube, pick something. Everybody's different. Um, I've tried different types of Zen. Um, I like Zen kind of, I like focusing on the breath, but then there are more subtle aspects to meditation that, um, that you'll discover if you're a beginner. Um, but it's best to, to try something simple to start with. Is there a good source for a simple breath meditation, Bryce? Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure online there's there'll be a billion. Online, you yeah. Google, YouTube, Google Zazen, Zazen, yeah, yeah. Z A Z E N, simple breath meditation. Um, right. Um, what time is it? We've got. Oh, we're, we're doing well for time. So. Any other questions? I realize this topic might be a little bit sensitive and people don't necessarily want to share uh, what they're going through yeah, because this isn't anonymous, right? So that's okay. Uh, you can email us. Uh, we'll be following up with an email. Um, I think we're going to send the link to this, uh, to the webinar. We will send, what else are we going to send? Um, we will add you to our mailing lists. Um, so you'll receive information about us and our work and some of the themes we've discussed today. Uh, if it doesn't resonate with you, you can unsubscribe. Uh, we won't hold that against you, um, but uh, we're pretty sure that you'll, if you're here today, you'll find it really um, helpful. You'll find lots of useful information. Um, and is there anything else? Are you offering anything, Bryce, uh, for people who are here today? Yeah, if anyone, who sees this or whatever, uh, or watches it on the webinar, please, on my website, there's a place to schedule something. Um, I'd love, why don't, if you watch the webinar, just type in webinar and we can do a uh, free 20 minute call just to see where you're at and, and whatnot, and get in, get into that. Um, yeah, that's what I'm offering, a 20 minute, 20 yeah. minute call. Great. Well, I'm going to, Copy you. <laughs> offer offer twenty one minute call. I was going to offer thirty minutes actually. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so anybody who's here, <laughs> I'll offer thirty six. Oh. No, twenty minutes. <laughs> you can have both, right? Yeah, you can have yeah. a whole. That's a good point. Ah, you're so spoiled today, everybody. So yeah, but uh, on a more serious note, if you found this helpful and you're feeling like you want to talk to us directly, feel free to get in touch. We will send all the information in a follow-up email. Um, and um, hopefully that will point you in the right direction. Uh, M Michelle has said, I don't know if it's Michelle or Michele, so apologies, um, saying so much good info. I will be listening to the recording more than once. Inadequacy syndrome really resonated for me. And I think you mean imposter syndrome um, and is something I feel I need to work on. Yes. Do not let imposter syndrome get in the way of you and your dreams and your passion and what you, you can do in the world. Um, yeah, I'm sure Bryce is the same as me. We're very passionate about helping people Thank to move you. forward uh, in their dreams and on their path. So unique path. So anything else, any final tips, Bryce, that you want to share? Final tips, yes. Final tip, don't quit. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. You can change directions. You can zigzag, go upside down and around, but do not quit the journey of exploration to 
exactly what you want and until you get that. And as you grow, what you want will change, but continue moving forward, please. Stagnancy and complacency is the ultimate death, in my opinion. It is Netflix, <laughs> happy hours, and not that there's anything wrong with that. I, I watch Netflix, <laughs> but like 30 years will disappear in this kind of loop of life. And we, we just have one shot. So like, let's, let's make it count. Yeah, I totally, I love that. And uh, I would say you have everything you need. You have everything you need to go on your unique journey and spend time with people who believe in you and believe that with you. Ah. All right. Yeah, so I think that we're done. Thank you so much, everybody who showed up. Apologies again for the technical glitch. We will be following up with you. Feel free to get in touch with us. And we'll keep you posted if we do another one. Hopefully we'll see you there. Awesome. All Take right. Care. Take care. Take care. Bye.